CFBL Television. CFBL Television is just one minute and 40 seconds old. To officially open television, Mr. Walter J. Blackburn. Good day to you. This is a good day for us at CFBL TV because it marks the beginning of another step forward in the progress of our station. Please be sure now to let us know how you like the pictures from our new transmitter. We think that they will be better than they were, but have to depend on you to tell us. Oh, damn it. For 50 years, CFPL has produced some of the most memorable television images of all time, and also some of its most offensive. It was the creation of a dynamic communications age, and the brainchild of a decidedly undynamic businessman. It helped set the standard for excellence in its industry, all the while battling regulations that tried to hold it back. It made a fortune, lost it, and was reinvented by a new generation of owners. And it gave its viewers a way of linking themselves, their families, and friends to the larger community of southwestern Ontario. It was the only station here, and you could be beholding to special interests if that's the case. But this was not a station that was beholden to the city hall, or to Labatt's, or to the university, or to the hospitals. I think they took the job seriously that there was it was a community responsibility when you're the only television station in the region to cover the news thoroughly and to, uh, to cover it fairly. And I think that's what they did. The programming created by CFPL-TV related to its viewers like no medium before it. Television gave them a way to see themselves and the world they lived in, and in ways they never dreamed were possible. If any organization or business represented the heartbeat of southwestern Ontario, it was CFPL-TV. And if you look closely, you might see yourself in its story. In 1947 was the last year radio was king. And even then it was losing ground to a new medium. During that year, NBC TV established a permanent network the first World Series was televised, and the hit children's show, Howdy Doody, premiered. No one was more aware of the rise of television than a 33-year-old newspaper publisher in London, Ontario. Walter Blackburn was one of a kind. Uh, he would be almost a caricature today, which would be unfortunate because he had great depth. I remember him coming through radio and television uh, with turkey vouchers at Christmas to shake hands with everybody. Or he would give the guys a cigar and the women a little box of chocolates. You know, it was just, that was about the end of that era. Uh, on his sense of humor, it was between nil and very little. If you will pardon an unworthy comment, I would say that your presence is our present. I had applied for a loan. He hears about this, calls me into his office, and I'm shaking in my boots wondering what I did wrong. <laughs> and he says, I hear that you're going to make a loan at a, at a finance company. And uh, yeah, I, need, I want this car. And he says, I don't want my employees going to a finance company. How much do you need? And uh, I told him, and he wrote me out a personal check and said, pay it back within a year and you won't have to pay any interest. Blackburn's father had opened the nation's second private radio station in 1922. CFPL, standing for Canadian Free Press London, was so crude the transmitter was located in the publisher's office. Each Sunday after uh, church at St. Paul's Cathedral, my father would suggest to me that we go down to the radio station and turn it on and play some music. My job was to wind the old spring-wound gramophone and to put the records on. 
my father would uh, turn the switches and dials uh, of the transmitter and would announce the program. The experience nurtured Blackburn's passion for technology. After assuming the helm of the company, he revamped his family's sagging radio station and introduced FM radio to Southern Ontario, an experiment that wouldn't turn a profit for 30 years. Newspaper men were not too inclined to adopt radio very readily. Uh, when radio and television came in, uh, you know, the newspaper fraternity saw this as, uh, you know, not credible, not respectable, not a checkable medium where you could go back and check. It was entertainment, it was out there, and so on. It was not looked upon with the respectability the newspaper was. In 1947, Blackburn traveled to the United States for a first-hand look at telecasting. What he saw wasn't encouraging. There were 67 private stations, all of them operating at a loss. Network radio was still the dominant entertainment medium. With summer and springtime. But at least the United States had television. In Canada, the federal government was unable to decide if the technology should be operated through public or private networks. By the time television was demonstrated at London's Western Fair in 1949, Technology was about to overtake governmental process. American signals were drifting across the border when weather conditions allowed. The kind of reception we've been getting in St. Mary's ever since I've had a set. Some of the people in the town have had one longer than me. Television was supposed to come to Canada in the fall of 1951, but it took another year before CBL Toronto signed on. Two months later, the federal government announced it would be accepting license applications from the private sector. On hearing the news, Blackburn reportedly walked into the office of his electronics manager and said, Now, Murray, we can get to work. There was a great feeling about uh, monopolies in those days, and the news monopolies particularly. And uh, also, I think at that time we were on the wrong side of the political fence. Uh, Arthur Ford, who was still our editor-in-chief, had always been an, an arch-Tory, and it was a liberal government. Just before April Fool's Day, 1953, a telegram arrived on Blackburn's desk. The CBC Board of Governors had approved CFPL's application. One week later, he announced the new station would be in operation by November to encourage television sales before Christmas. For Blackburn and his employees, the next nine months would be a challenging pregnancy. Well, hello, it's good to know that we've got television around. We've been waiting a long time for a good reception here in Oxford County.